In this lesson, we're going to talk about um, graphs that have a phase shift. So reminder that a phase shift is a shift that moves the graph left or right. So basically, it's a horizontal shift, um, the same that we talked about in unit three from first semester. And it's determined by this H number. Um, now, this minus H number, uh, the minus is actually part of the formula. So that's why it's backwards from what you would think. So if you have a plus H, it's actually going to move the graph to the left. And if you have a minus H, it's going to move your graph to the right. So let's take a look at these examples here. Um, we're going to determine three things for each example. First, the midline. Second, the amplitude. And then um, phase shifts. So um, what I like to do is go through and figure out um, the midline for each example first. So I'm going to use M for midline. Remember that midline is a line, so it needs to be an equation. It can't just be a number. And uh, that is always going to be Y equals. And then another quick reminder is that this K number is going to be your midline number. So whatever that K number is, it's going to be Y equals that number for your midline. And if you are missing the K number, meaning there's nothing there, then your midline is Y equals zero. All right, so let's take a look at number one. Uh, the midline is going to be Y equals two because that's my K number. For number two, my midline is actually going to be Y equals zero. And the reason is because I have no K number. So it's like there's an invisible plus zero there. For number three, my midline is going to be Y equals negative six because that's my K number. And then for number four, it's going to be Y equals four because that is my K number. Now let's move on to amplitude. Um, I want to remind you that a couple things actually. Amplitude you get by looking at your A value. Um, amplitude is always positive. If you have a negative, that does not change your amplitude. It changes the fact that your graph is reflected. So every time you give an answer for amplitude, it should always be a positive number. You can kind of think of it like you're taking the absolute value, whatever that number is. All right, so let's take a look at number one. Amplitude, and amplitude, by the way, is just a number. It's not an equation like midline. Um, the number in front of sine, since there's nothing there, we're just going to, uh, we know that it's a one. So the amplitude for this one is one. Uh, for number two, the amplitude is three. And I see that there's a negative there. The negative tells me that the graph is reflected. It has nothing to do with amplitude. Um, so amplitude is positive three. For number three, amplitude would be the number um, in front of sine. Since there's nothing there, I know it's a one. And it's positive one because, again, the negative is a reflection. And then for number four, my amplitude would be two. All right, so the, so far that's all been old news. <clears throat> now we're going to move on to phase shift, which is new. Um, so we're going to be looking at what's in the parentheses. So um, for phase shift, I'm looking just at what's in the parentheses. And recall that you have to take the opposite sign. So if it's positive, we're actually moving left. And if it's negative, we're moving right. So um, for phase shift, I'm going to say PS for phase shift. For number one, I'm looking at this number right here. Since it's positive, I know I'm going to be moving left. And then it's left whatever uh, your radian uh, measurement is. So in this case, it's pi over 4. For number two, I have minus 2 pi over 3. So minus actually shifts us to the right, 2 pi over 3. For number three, <clears throat> I have plus 3 pi over 4, plus moves to the left, 3 pi over 4. And then the last one, I don't have any parentheses. So what that means is that there is no phase shift. So I'm going to write none. So the only time you have a phase shift is if you have a value with x in parentheses after the sign. Uh, if there's no parentheses, that means you have no phase shift. Now we're going to take a look at some graphs, and we're going to identify um, those three things that we just did in the previous examples. And we're going to use that information to write an equation. So for example one, um, the first thing you need to do is find midline and amplitude. Um, if you remember, those two things have um, like a very basic formula that you can use. Uh, for midline, we're going to do uh, the top 
plus the bottom y value over 2. And then for uh, amplitude, we're going to do the top minus the bottom y value over 2. And then also with midline, remember, it's always going to be y equals. It has to be an equation. All right, so let's do midline first. Um, my top number, my top y value is 1. My bottom y value is negative 1. So my midline would be 1 plus negative 1 over 2, which is 0 over 2, or just plain 0. So my midline here is y equals 0, which you may have been able to see from the graph um, without even doing the equation, which is fine. Um, so I'm going to draw this in. That's my midline, y equals 0. Okay, um, next we can do amplitude. So I'm going to do 1 minus negative 1 over 2, which is 2 over 2, and that simplifies to 1. So what that tells me is that from the green line, from the green midline up to the graph, should be two units, and from the green midline down to the graph should also be two units. Now the phase shift, um, this is where we have to really be um, very detail-oriented. We have to remember what sine looks like. Um, when we draw the sine graph, so I'm going to draw a little sketch here, it looks like this. That's the, what the parent function looks like. So that first point that starts at zero starts at the origin. So the first thing we're going to do is try to find that starting point. And the starting point can be anything um, that starts at zero. And I'm talking about zero for the y value, not the x value. So if you look at our graph here, I see a couple points um, that cross at zero, but you want to try to look for the one that's closest to the, the origin. Usually that's the easiest thing to do. So the one that I see closest is actually over here. So it's a little bit to the left of the origin. And it crosses at negative pi over 4. So what that tells me is that this graph actually got shifted to the left. So I'm going to circle left here. And it got shifted by pi over 4. So now I can write my equation. Um, and I have to put in a couple different pieces of information. Um, the first thing is amplitude. Since the amplitude is 1, I don't have to write it. I can just write um, sine. This does have a phase shift, so I definitely need parentheses. If I'm moving to the left, I have to use plus. So I'm doing plus pi over 4 because that was my phase shift. And then my midline is 0, so I don't have to write plus 0. I'm just done. This would be my, um, my final answer, what I have there in purple. All right, let's move on to number 2. We're going to do the exact same thing. Um, for midline and amplitude, I need my top and bottom y values. Looks like my top value is at negative 1, and then my bottom value is down here at negative 5. So to find the midline, I'm going to do this above the graph. I would have negative 1 plus negative 5 over 2. So that would be negative 6 over 2, which simplifies to negative 3. So my midline is at negative 3. And I like to draw in my midline just so that I can double check that I use the right formula, that everything looks right, that I have the same number above and below. Now let's actually calculate amplitude, and then we can really double check that our midline's in the right spot. So I'm going to have um, negative 1 minus negative 5 over 2, which gives me 4 over 2 for a grand total of 2 for my amplitude. So then I just want to check if I go to the highest point and the lowest point of my graph. Um, I really just want to make sure that those are uh, the amplitude is 2. It's two boxes away from my midline. All right, now phase shift, this is the tricky part. Um, I want to see, if, and I'm really looking at my midline. Um, I know I said on number one you're looking to see where it crosses at zero, and that is true. Um, but since our midline changed, um, it went down three here, I'm really looking to see where does it cross the midline at, at zero, like our pretend zero. Um, so the, the one closest to zero on the x-axis looks like right here. And then my graph goes up and then down and comes back up and stops again here. So that's my sine curve that I'm really looking at. So I can see that starting from zero, um, for when my x value is 0, which would be over here, this point moved to the right. So I know my phase shift is to the right. And then to figure out what the actual number is, you just look up to the x-axis, um, and it says 2 pi over 3. So that would be my phase shift, is 2 pi over 3 to the right. So now I can actually write my equation. So I'm going to have y equals, amplitude goes first, so I would have 2 sine 
And then in parentheses, that's where I'm going to put my phase shift. Since I'm going to the right, I need a subtraction sign because it's always opposite. So it's going to be x minus 2 pi over 3. And then my midline was negative 3, so I have to put that as my k value minus 3 at the end. The first thing I'm going to do before we do anything having to do with the actual example is I want to draw in red, I want to put our parent function. So um, in red, I'm going to put y equals sine x because I want to have all my basic points so that it's a little bit easier to see uh, exactly what's going on here. So um, I'm going to do my y values, 1 and negative 1, and then I need my four tick marks pi over 2, pi, 3 pi over 2, and 2 pi. And then the points look like this, 0, 1, 0, negative 1, and 0. So in red here, this is my parent function. That's the most basic version of the sine graph. All right, now I'm going to do um, this graph in blue. So this is going to be my new graph. This is my actual answer for example 1. So the, the only thing that's changing from the parent graph to the sign uh, to this example is this phase shift here. And because I have plus pi over 2, remember that it's opposite. So this graph is actually getting shifted left pi over 2. So what that means is that instead of my first point being at 0, 0, my first point is going to be left pi over 2 of that. Um, so what's kind of nice here, because it's going by pi over 2, it's going by halves, um, that's what my sine graph is going by already. So all I need to do is put in a negative pi over 2 to the left, um, and now my new point is going to start there, and I can leave the rest of my points here. So I'm going to start at 0, and then I go 1, 0, negative 1, and 0. So I get to use all the same tick marks. Nothing really changed, um, and that's not going to happen really today very much because we're not going to um, change the period of the graph. So now I'm going to trace it and actually draw in my graph. So you can see that the blue graph is the exact same thing as the red graph. It's just that it got moved over to the left. All right, now we have to talk about some other features of this graph. The first thing is zeros. Zeros are where the blue graph crosses the x-axis. So I see three of them. You see one here, here, and here. So remember that the red numbers and this one over here all the way to the left is blue. But the numbers that are labeled on um, the x-axis, those are my x values. And then my y values are either going to be 1, 0, or negative 1. Um, but because we're talking about zeros, they're going to be 0. So my first 0, uh, which is all the way to the left, would be negative pi over 2, 0. The middle one is at positive pi over 2. And then the last one is at 3 pi over 2. The domain of this graph, um, technically it's all real numbers, but because we graphed one period or one cycle of this graph, um, we're going to limit our, the period of our graph um, to where the blue dots started and stopped. So it starts right here at negative pi over 2, and it includes negative pi over 2 because we have a point there. And then it stops right here where the, that last blue dot is, which is at 3 pi over 2. So the length of our graph did not change. The length of the graph is still 2 pi long. Um, it's just that instead of starting at 0, now it starts a little bit to the left of that. And then the range um, is going to be um, the, the same as the standard sine graph. The, the highest y value is right here at 1, and then the lowest is right here at negative 1. So range would be from negative 1 to 1. And again, I'm using brackets because I have points at 1 and negative 1, so I want them included. This graph has two things that are changing from the parent graph. The first is that um, it has an amplitude of 2. And the second thing is that the, um, it has a phase shift. And since I have a negative here, this is actually going to shift the graph right pi over 4. So this is the first time that uh, we're going to have some kind of crazy numbers. Not crazy numbers, but we're going to have different numbers on the x-axis. It's not going to be our standard pi over 2, pi, 3 pi over 2, and 2 pi. Um, so I want to spend a little bit of time talking about how you're going to actually get these um, x values. So because we're moving this graph to the right, what that means is that these values um, are normal values. And by normal, I'm talking about, um, or maybe I'll put regular, 
our regular x values are 0, pi over 2, pi, 3 pi over 2, and 2 pi. That's usually what we put on the x-axis. But now this thing is telling us everything is going to be shifted to the right by pi over 4. So what we're going to do is we're going to add pi over 4 to each of our existing normal x values. Um, so let me write that down. So we're going to do plus pi over 4, plus pi over 4. And we're doing that to every single one of our regular x values. Now this might seem kind of overwhelming. It looks like it's going to be complicated. Um, this all really boils down to, you can put it into your calculator um, without the pi. So you could actually just write this or type this into your calculator as 0 plus 1 fourth, which is 1 fourth. Um, and then you can put the pi back in at the end. So it's kind of like what we did with um, radians and degrees, how we would kind of take the pi out to put it in the calculator and then put it back in at the end for our final answer. Um, so this one is really like 1 half plus 1 fourth, um, which is 3 fourths. So that would be 3 pi over 4. And then this is like 1 plus 1 fourth, which is 5 fourths. So 5 pi over 4. So what I'm doing right now is I'm coming up with our new x values um, that we're going to label on our graph. So then this would be um, 3 over 2 plus 1 fourth, which is 7 fourths. So that would be 7 pi over 4. And then this last one would be 2 plus 1 fourth, which is 9 fourths. So that's 9 pi over 4. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go on to my graph, and I'm going to label these. So it doesn't really matter where you, you put them as long as they're evenly spaced. So your pi over 4 can kind of start wherever you want, but then uh, once you put in your 3 pi over 4, um, the distance between my first two tick marks should kind of stay consistent. So now this should be 5 pi over 4, um, 7 pi over 4, and then 9 pi over 4. And you'll notice that I did not put in the standard um, parent function. And the reason is because once we start shifting around um, all of our x values and they're different from our standard parent graph x values, it, it actually makes it, I think, more confusing to have all of those labels on here. Um, so there's a reason I did not put those on there. Okay, now um, it tells me that the amplitude is 2. I also know that my midline, because this is like a plus 0, that means my midline is actually at 0, which means I'm not going to have to um, move around. So that means that my graph is going to go up to positive 2, and it's going to go down to negative 2. So now let's actually plot some of these points. Um, usually you start at 0, but our new starting point is going to be at pi over 4, because the whole graph got moved to the right. So that's like my new 0. Uh, or my pretend zero, and now I go up, and I'm going up to two because of that amplitude, back down to zero, down to negative two because of that amplitude, and then back to zero. So here's what my graph is going to look like. So now I've got a graph that is stretched. It's twice as tall as the parent graph, and it got shifted over um, so that it started at pi over four and stopped at nine pi over four, whereas it usually um, would start at zero and stop at two pi. This graph has two transformations that are happening. Uh, the first thing is a phase shift. Um, this is going to shift the, right, the graph right pi over 6. And then this 1 is going to change the midline uh, to y equals 1. So it's going to shift the whole graph up 1. Um, so the first thing that I want to do, just so that I don't forget, I want to draw in my midline. And I'm going to do that in green. Um, so I'm going to go up here on my graph, and I'm going to go to 1. And then I'm going to put in this midline. So this is not officially part of my graph. Um, this is just um, like it's, I, I like to use it as like a pretend x-axis so that it's like my new pretend zero. Um, I think it just makes my life a little bit easier. OK, so the next thing we need to do um, is figure out what our x values are going to be. And we did this in the previous slide, and I, I went into um, quite a bit of detail. But basically what we're going to do is we're going to take all of um, our normal or our regular x values, uh, meaning 0, pi over 2, pi, 3 pi over 2, and 2 pi. And we're going to add, because we're going to the right, so we're going to add 
pi over 6 to all of those values. And um, I kind of showed you how you can use your calculator and, you know, kind of take out the pies at the very beginning and then put it back in after you use your calculator. Um, so I'm not going to spend a lot of time talking about that on this slide. Um, I'll do maybe the first couple just so you get the idea. So for this first one, uh, what we'd actually be doing is 0 plus 1 6, which is just 1 6. And then you put the pi back in, so pi over 6. Uh, we'll do one more, so 1 half plus 1 6. Um, if you added those together um, in your calculator, you're going to get 2 thirds. So that turns into 2 pi over 3. Okay, you're going to continue that same process. And here's what you're going to get. 7 pi over 6, 5 pi over 3, and 13 pi over 6. So these are my new um, values that I want to label on my x-axis. So I'm going to have, start with pi over 6. And then remember, you just want to have um, a consistent scale. So However far apart your first two are, that's how far apart the rest of them should be from each other. Now I'm labeling this on the x-axis, but remember that when we actually plot our points, um, we're going to be kind of using that green midline as kind of our pretend zero. So here we go. Um, this one starts at pi over 6 at 0, and then I'm going to follow that pattern, 0, 1, 0, negative 1, 0. Because I'm working from my midline, that shift of that I'm going up one is already taken care of. I don't have an amplitude change. I don't have a reflection. So I don't have to worry about anything else. Um, so I am going to have to go up to two. So I'm going to label that. So I'm going to go, remember, I'm, it's like my pretend zero. So zero, one, zero, negative one, and then back to zero. And when I'm saying zero, I know I'm not actually at zero. I'm actually at one. Um, but I'm pretending like my midline is kind of like a pretend zero. All right, so what I just did in blue, that's our final graph. Now we have to do um, a maximum and minimum. So um, our, we have one maximum, which is right here. Um, so what I need to write down is an ordered pair that represents that point. So the maximum is at 2 pi over 3. That's my x value. And then my y value is 2. So that's my maximum. And then I have to do the same thing for the minimum. So the minimum is uh, this point right here. My x value is 5 pi over 3. And then my y value is actually 0, which isn't even labeled on here, but um, it's on the x-axis, so that means that my um, y value would be 0. 